In this tutorial, you'll learn how to recycle five t-shirts from boring to absolutely amazing and unique. Hey guys, after posting my do-it-yourself shorts tutorial, many of you asked for more clothes DIYs. So today we're making shirts, tops and all that cool stuff. I'll show you how to transform five plain boring t-shirts into fabulous tops that you'll adore, I promise. Wanna see it for yourself? Let's do it! Let's start with this spiral dyed fringe t-shirt. You'll need a shirt, fabric spray paint, elastics, scissors and beads. First we're going to color the shirt using a spray paint. Place the shirt on the flat surface. Locate the center of your shirt and pinch it there. This will be the center of your spiral. Now start twisting the fabric like so. You can also use the palm of your hand. Then start feathering the remaining parts into a spiral with your other hand until you get a nice little cinnamon roll. Hmm, <laughs> now I'm getting really hungry. On with the t-shirt. We need to secure the shape with elastic so that our roll shape stays in place while painting. Tuck the shirt parts peeking out under your elastics like so. I want to color two opposite fourths of the circle in pink and the two other in blue. Hold your stencil over the shirt so you have only one fourth of the shirt exposed and spray the color on. I started with pink for the first fourth of the shirt, now I'm moving on to the blue spray paint. Then go in with pink again and lastly with blue on the last quarter. Using the same stencil, cover the shirt and spray on the blue paint. When the front is painted, flip the shirt around and repeat the steps on this side. Use pink on the same two fourths as before and do the same with the blue spray paint. Spray applies the color in a wider circle, therefore it's necessary to use a stencil if you're working with more than one color. You can be quite generous because spray paint doesn't tend to leak throughout the fabric. You can also just pour some paint on the t-shirt for a higher pigmentation. When you're happy, cut the elastics and here's the result. As you can see, the edges are much sharper when tie-dyeing with spray paint instead of usual fabric paint. If you want more colored stripes, just go ahead and tie the shirt into a roll again. Pinch it at the same spot as before, twist, feather the shirt, secure with elastics and start spraying. Since I want to add just pink color this time, I'll spray a pink spray paint over the entire shirt, both on the front and at the back. Cut the elastics and now the spiral design is even more pronounced. I love how it looks, like a cool skeleton spiral. Finally, we can proceed to the fringe part. Start by cutting along the bottom part of the shirt to make it a bit more cropped and to get rid of the edge. For the cute fringe, make narrow cuts vertically approximately half of an inch apart. You can go as high as you want with it, I decided to make about 4 inches long cuts. You can cut both the front and the back of the shirt in one go. This way you get equal strings on both sides and you finish quicker. Next we need to pull each string, this will gather the material and won't look that freshly cut. Before we start tying the strings, I recommend placing a piece of paper inside the shirt to separate the front and the back strings. We'll decorate fringes with colorful beads. I decided for lilac, blue, white and yellow ones. Take your first and fourth string, it doesn't matter where you start, and thread on three random colored beads. Make a knot to keep them in place like so. Then take your third string, go through this loop and pair it with the string number 6. Add beads and make a knot. As you see you need to have two strings between the two you tie together. So now you must take the fifth and the eighth one. Put the beads on and make a knot. Continue tying the strings with beads all along the front and then turn the shirt around and continue the same steps at the back. Take two strings, thread on the beads and tie a knot. In the end you will get this cool cross tied fringe which I absolutely adore. You could just make a normal fringe, maybe add some beads to each string, but I think this cross tied fringe looks so much better. My shirt had a wide neckline so I like to wear it off the shoulder. If you cut the fringe shorter you can totally make it appropriate for school. It goes great with jeans and will give you that fun and carefree accent to your outfit. Next for making this adorable cat shirt. We'll need a shirt, fabric paint, container for color, sponge applicators or a paintbrush, scissors, self-adhesive paper, pencil, a piece of cardboard and a printed shape or caption of your choice. You can print out words, smiley face, flower, animal, you name it. I chose to go for a how cute caption and a kitten on the front while painting kitty paws on the back. It will look spectacular! First we have to cut out the kitten, the how cute caption and the paws. 
I want to have three different paws sizes, so I have to cut all three out. If you want to have all one size, it's enough to just cut it once. You can put any caption you like on your shirt. For example, a real name of your pet if you have one. When all the shapes are cut, place them on a self-adhesive paper, outline them with a pencil and cut them out. The important part for us is the paper embracing our shapes. So I like to make one cut to reach the shape, a cat in this case, and then cut it out in one go. In the end you need to seal the cut with the tape or a piece of self-adhesive paper. Do exactly the same for the caption. One cut to reach the letter, cut the letters out and seal the cuts. See how we get a perfect caption stencil. And lastly make few paws stencils. I made two big paws, two middle sized and two small paws stencils. Before you start painting, place a piece of cardboard inside the shirt. This will prevent the color transferring from the front to the back of your shirt. Stick the How Cute stencil on the shirt and don't forget to place a small dot inside the letter O and E. Time for my favorite part, painting! Dip the sponge or a brush into the paint. Always apply the paint from the edge towards the center to get a sharp and neat edge. I'm using pink and green fabric paint for this shirt. I decided to color the word how and a dot in pink and the word cute in green. Normally the fabric paint looks best on white fabric, but you can also buy paint meant for darker fabrics. So if your shirt isn't white or some other light color, make sure to use dark fabric paint. I applied two coats of paint and now we can remove the stencil. First I'm removing the two dots with tweezers. Then I carefully peeled off the big one. Look how beautiful it is, simply perfect! Let's move on to the kitten. Stick the stencil in the middle of the shirt below the caption. When choosing a shape for your shirt, I recommend going for a simple one. This way it's much easier to make a stencil and color it neatly. Also keep in mind that if you're using one color, you will only get a shape of an image, so make sure that the shape is representative enough. Once the paint on the front is completely dry, flip the shirt around and place the paws on the back. I decided to place them diagonally, starting with two smaller on the bottom and then bigger on top. I'm making three pink and three green paws, starting with the pink one on top. Again, apply the paint from the edge towards the center for a neat result. When you're done with the first paw, go ahead and peel away the stencil right away. It's much easier to remove it when the color is still wet. The edge will still be sharp and precise. I've been obsessed with fabric paint lately. I love how you can transform plain pieces in something unique and creative. You can also make a shirt for your friend's birthday. There's nothing better than a personalized present. And in case you were wondering, fabric paint is completely washable, so you'll be able to use your amazing customized clothes for many years. Last paw stencil to peel off and I'm all done with painting. I'm absolutely in love with this design, especially the paws on the back. We are not yet finished with this shirt, no no, I also want to cut it into a muscle tee. Cut away the bottom edge, I didn't want to go too short. And cut away the sleeves, making larger holes for the arms like so. Give all the edges a good tuck and we're all done with this gorgeous top! How adorable it is! I like wearing muscle tees with colorful bandos underneath, so here I went for the pink one. I finished this cute girly look with some distressed jean shorts and pink sneakers. For all you edgy girls, I'm creating this cool American flag top with side cutouts and chains. You will need a black t-shirt, scissors, chains, black thread and a needle, star studs, self-adhesive paper, masking tape, red and white fabric paint, container for paint, sponge applicators or a paintbrush and pliers. Lay your shirt flat. Cut away the bottom edge to get rid of that suit part, but you still want to keep the shirt long. Next cut all along the sides of the shirt. Start where the sleeves start and continue cutting straight along. But before you reach the bottom, start cutting towards the corner, making a curved cut to the outside like so. Fold the shirt in half and cut the other side by following the edge of the already cut side. This way you get a symmetrical cut on both sides. Get your chains, I'm using two different sizes of silver chains, and sew them on the sides of the shirt. The chains will hold the back and the front of the top together and will also add a cool detail to the design. Using pliers, cut about 3 inches long chain pieces. A combination of thinner and thicker chains will look awesome. Take your thread and a needle and make a knot. Now we're ready to start sewing. Flip the shirt inside out because we want to attach the chain on the inside of the shirt. Make a first stitch with a needle going inside and then up again. Lead the needle through the chain loop and make another stitch like so. Make two knots to secure the work. 
We have sewed one side of the chain to the front fabric of the top, so now we have to sew the other chain side to the back fabric of the top. Repeat the steps, making sure that knots and the chain end will be on the inside of your shirt. You can buy chains like this in a craft store or you can use pieces of old necklaces that you don't wear anymore. I never throw away my old jewelry because there are so many parts you can reuse. Beads, charms, chains, all that can be used for your future DIY projects. Cut another three equally long chain pieces. My first chain was thicker, so now I'm taking a thinner one with a cross. This is actually a part of an old necklace that I don't wear anymore. Also, I recommend checking the jewelry sections on sale. You'll definitely find a lot of super cheap DIY supplies there. A necklace with a lot of chains will be definitely cheaper than buying a chain in a craft store. You can then use it for anything you want. I'm keeping about half of an inch space between each chain. I went for 4 chains to begin with and this is how they will look when the shirt is on. Pretty epic! Time to sew 4 chains on the other side of the shirt as well, again 2 thicker and 2 thinner ones. I use the clip to mark where I want my first chain to be. I decided to add a couple of chains more on each side lower on the shirt. This is why I love making my own shirt so much. You don't need to have the entire shirt design completely planned from the beginning. Just start cutting and creating and then try your shirt on and you'll see if there's something missing. You'll get so many awesome ideas along the way. My last chain is on so I can flip the shirt again and pull firmly all the cut edges. See how cool the sides of our shirt look? Absolutely amazing! For the American flag, start placing a piece of cardboard inside the shirt to prevent color transferring on the back. Take a rectangle piece of self-adhesive or normal paper in the desired size of your flag and stick it on the shirt where you want the flag to be. Stick four masking tape pieces all around it and then peel the self-adhesive paper away. Stick masking tape pieces horizontally one close to another. Then peel away every other tape piece and you're left with the perfect striped stencil. In the top left corner of the flag we will attach the star studs so we need to keep it black. Dip the brush into red fabric paint and start coloring the first stripe. I want the flag to have the distressed look. To achieve that, don't color the entire stripe perfectly from edge to edge. Leave some parts on the edges without color. Just paint quickly and don't pay attention on making it neat. This will give you a cool distressed flag look. We're done with the red paint. Make sure to use fabric paint for dark fabric if you want the colors to look bright on a darker material. Stick new pieces on the top left corner as before and on the red stripes when they dry. Go in with white fabric paint. I like coloring the stripes with the brush as it gives you a more distressed result, while the sponge applicator will give you a more even layer of color, which is not what we want in this case. We're ready to peel off all the tape pieces. I like to still keep the top and the left one for the time being, they will guide me where to place the stars. Take the studs, place them on the top left corner of the flag, push them through the fabric and with the help of scissors bend the spikes inside. Peel off the two remaining tape pieces and we're all done with this epic top. Since the top has cut all along the sides, I'm wearing it with a black bandeau. See how the chains pop on top of the black? At the bottom of the shirt I tied two knots to hold everything together and I paired it with distressed denim shorts and white sneakers. Or you can also make the same design on a white shirt. In that case you will need red and blue fabric paint. Color the little square on the top left corner in blue and make red stripes elsewhere on the flag. From rock chic style to happy and cute. I'll show you how to easily make a halter top out of a plain shirt. For this project we need a white fitted shirt, scissors, few needles or pins, white thread, heart shaped printout and colorful fabric markers. Lay your shirt flat and cut away the sleeves. Make a cut on both shoulders to separate the top straps. Then flip the shirt around and make a cut across the back of the shirt connecting the bottom of the sleeve cuts. Be careful that you only cut the back layer of the top. Next, cut the neckline on the front of the shirt, keeping the rounded shape. Now we need to make a fold on the neckline. Fold about half an inch edge of fabric towards the inside of the top and secure it with needles all around the collar. Cut away any extra fabrics in the corners. It's time to sew the folded edge. Thread your needle, go through the folded edge and tie the ends of the thread together twice for a secured knot. Continue stitching up and down along the neckline, making sure that you have enough space for a string in this pocket that we're creating. 
Keep removing the needles while stitching until you reach the other side. Make one final stitch through the fabric upwards. Go through the loop with the needle and make a knot. Repeat this twice to secure your work. Cut away the excess thread. On the bottom of the shirt I'm just going to snip off an inch of the fabric. To get a straight cut, fold the edge upwards. You can secure it with needles and cut along the line. We're going to use that extra fabric to get a string for our halter. I had to pin the edge along with needles as the fabric kept rolling inside. You should end up with the fabric ring that you need to cut on one side to get a long string. You can also cut away the already sewed part here and sew it yourself by making a few stitches like this. Now you got a nice even string for your halter. Pull it firmly to give it a more rounded shape, attach a pin on one end and lead it through the folded pocket on the neckline. Do this step by step. Lead the string through the pocket a couple of inches, deruffle the fabric, go a few more inches and deruffle again until your string comes out on the other side. Pull the string so you have equally long pieces on both sides and deruffle the neckline. Make a knot on each end of the string. You could also thread on a bit before tying a knot. That would look so cute! Give all the cut edges a tuck and we're done with the shape of our top. But we still have to give this plain snow white halter some color. Cut a hard shape out of the printout and place it on the center of the top. To keep the fabric stretched and flat, you can place some heavy objects on the corners. Secure the stencil in place with some masking tape pieces. Finally, we are ready to use some fabric markers. I'm gonna fill the heart with colorful dots of different sizes. First I'm making some larger dots and then smaller to fill the empty space around them. I'm using pink, yellow, orange, turquoise, green and purple markers to create a color explosion in the shape of a heart. The fabric markers work best on white fabric, see how life and bright the colors are. A few final dots and we're done! Peel off the masking tape pieces, remove the stencil and look at our absolutely spectacular design. The heart looks like a beautiful mosaic made of tiny colored stones, so pretty! I paired the top with my yellow shorts and white sneakers for a simple yet lovely look. Last but not least, we're making a knotted smiley shirt. You will only need a shirt, piece of chalk or a pencil and scissors. That's it! Lay your shirt flat and sketch where you want to have a smiley face. Make three cuts along the lines. Next make short cuts crosswise on the left and the right of the cuts. Give all the little strings a nice tug. Now we need to knot the left and right string pairs together like so. I like to knot each pair twice. Pull the knots firmly to secure them. Here I'm also cutting them out, pulling the strings and tying the upper and lower pairs together. This knotting technique is a great method for shrinking shirts that are too big for you. It gives you some nice roughly texture and also makes the shirt more fitted. In the end I'm just going to cut the bottom edge of the shirt. I'm snipping away some fabric on the neckline to make it a bit wider so I can wear it off shoulder. And I'm also cutting away a bit of the sleeves. Here goes the first one. I placed that extra fabric from the right sleeve on the left one as a guide. Pull all the freshly cut edges so that the material rolls up and our fifth shirt is finished. I paired it with a flowy navy skirt and white sneakers for a super comfy but very adorable look. And these were my 5 DIY shirts ideas, I really hope you guys like them. If you want more clothes DIYs, give this video a thumbs up or let me know in the comments. Also tell me which of the 5 shirts is your favorite because I'm really interested in what styles you like. And this also helps me when I'm planning for new DIYs. Ok, I hope you're doing great and I'll talk to you soon, bye! Give another life to your old clothes and be the creator of your own unique style. Along the way you will freshen up your closet, save money and protect the environment.